All right, good morning. It's good to see everybody. I hope you're doing well and looking forward to a wonderful week of a little vacation and a time to share with our families and friends for uh, uh, Thanksgiving. I'm very excited about that for our family, and I know you are as well. So we pray for safe travel and, and uh, good fellowship with everybody. So glad you're here. If you're a visitor with us today, if you're a guest, we have some cards in our pews in front of you. We'd love a record of your visit so we could contact you by email or phone call just to let you know how glad we were that you came and joined us for worship today. So those are available to you. And uh, I have a few announcements that I wanted to share with you. There's a lot in the bulletin you'll want to look at. But let me just just highlight a few of them. First of all, when you open the bulletin, you'll see in the right-hand page over here the Thanksgiving service that will be held in our church today at 5 o'clock. This is our first attempt at a community Thanksgiving service. There are three churches that will come together tonight. You see the information listed. The service is at 5. And a couple of things about the service. There's a lot of neat things that will be happening as we all come together, three different congregations. But we'll have a combined choir and a combined orchestra. So it's one of the reasons our, our chairs, we've, we've taking the normal stuff up and we're we're really close to the edge up here Taylor and me uh, but we're looking forward to a good service for our, our congregations to join together tonight for Thanksgiving and we will take an offering and the offering will be split for two th purposes one is the inside out ministries in Madison uh, that serves those in need and the other is for the homeless students fund of the Madison City School Systems so you'll hear a little bit about that tonight and I want you to be aware of it so I hope that you'll come and extend a good uh, hospitality of Trinity for all those who will be gathered with us tonight here uh, at the service. And then a few other little things uh, you'll notice. Uh, this uh, Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, the 29th, is the beginning of Advent season. So it's a busy, wonderful time for all of us. And you'll see on the left-hand side of your bulletins all of the schedule for Advent. We have children's uh, musical programs, uh, youth program uh, for Christmas. We have uh, lessons and carols from our choir and our congregation. Uh, we have the global missions coordinator for CBF who will be speaking on the 13th about missions because missions is such a big part of what we think about when we gather to worship during Christmas. Uh, a lot of things. Next Sunday is the beginning of Advent and is what we have our, is our hanging of the green service. So I'm really looking forward to that wonderful time to decorate our sanctuary and begin that season and journey of great anticipation of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and then in, in vain of that, as you look in the middle, there are a few I want to highlight. One is the Advent devotional guides. We have church members who have written a brief devotional for each of the days of Advent beginning next Sunday. And those guidebooks are available now in the foyer, in the gathering area, and other places throughout the church. So you and your family may want to use those as your devotional guides during this time uh, of Advent. And then just skipping down a few other uh, things briefly, the Madison uh, Casa uh, Christmas food bins that we provide for the elderly and needs here in our community. Those bins are due next Sunday. So a lot of the Sunday school classes, some individuals or families have uh, gone together and provided the stuff for the food bins and uh, those are due next week and I want you to see that. And then uh, a week from Wednesday on December 2nd we will have our pancake uh, fundraiser supper. So we've been doing the pancake breakfast for the last few years and just note it's breakfast for supper this time. So it's pancake supper and this is for the youth to help uh, provide some funds for them uh, for retreats and camps and other activities that they uh, that they have. Uh, on the right side of the bulletin just two more things one is the uh, prime timers and prime timers is our uh, older middle older adult ministry here at Trinity and with Amy uh, leaving I'm going to be taking on the role of, of staff leadership for that and working with our prime timers I'm very excited about it I sort of look at prime timers as 55 age 55 and above. So if you're in that category, you're welcome, whether you thought you were a prime timer or not. And I'm a little bit below that, so you're also welcome if you're below 55. Uh, we'd love for you to be a part of it. So next Sunday, we'll have just a little brief meeting after church over here in this section. So all of you beware. We'll hopefully gather over there after church next Sunday. We're going to talk about some ideas and plans and some trips and so forth. And then whoever wants to can go out to lunch. And I'm looking forward to, to getting to know them. And then just the last thing, you notice we have a flower here in our sanctuary today. Uh, we have this flower when we welcome a new member to a, to a family in our church and today we welcome Gracie Lee Moore into our family, to the Moore family, so we're very glad. You all got back from China about a, a week ago, just a few days ago actually, so we're so glad to welcome you all back and to see Naomi's loving her little sister already, uh, Gracie Lee. So we 
we're so glad that you're here and the flowers in honor of her and your family today. Let's uh, begin our time of worship with a moment of passing the peace of Christ and the greetings of our Lord today. So let's greet each other in Jesus' name. You may also note if you were looking over the order of worship today, this is a, uh, a really neat Sunday for us. It's one of my favorites of the year. The Sunday before Thanksgiving is a day that we take to primarily spend in prayer. So throughout our service we'll have what we call prayer experiences, which are brief moments to practice and to enjoy the opportunity to pray together in different, maybe creative ways. And so we'll lead us all through those times of prayer throughout our service today. And you'll notice that as we go through the, the order of worship. It's a little different than what we normally do. But I do enjoy this and we remember the Lord talked about uh, the temple and the places of worship as houses of prayer. So we come together today to focus primarily on prayer. So welcome to worship. I'm glad you're here. Please bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we enter Thanksgiving week, we do indeed have much for which to be thankful. Thank you for the freedoms and opportunities we have just, just by living in this country, in this city, and, and for all your other blessings. But as a church, Father, we, we also have heavy hearts. We have some families facing very difficult situations and, and others dealing with uh, maybe less serious trials. We ask for your continued presence and guidance for all of us and for the peace that only you can provide, especially for those families with great need. Because you are the creator and the all-knowing and all-powerful God, we meet today to worship and praise you in spite of these hardships that we face. Please be with Brother Mike as he's leads us this morning. Hear our prayers, Lord. Mold us and strengthen us for your service. Fill us with your love so that we may take it to others. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let us now sing together our hymn of gathering, hymn number 445, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Please stand as we sing together. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my fall throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, how <clears throat> my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless, and since he bids me seek his face before trust his grace I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer may I thy consolation 
share Till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise To seize the everlasting prize And shout while passing through Please be seated. At this time in our service, we ask you to take a moment to simply be still. This is such a wonderful time of year with Thanksgiving, the Advent season, and Christmas coming so soon, but it's also a very busy time of year with Thanksgiving meals and recipes and cooking and shopping and preparation with people traveling in and out and coming here, coming there, when? How are they getting there? Are they flying? Are they driving? And then there's all the rush into Christmas and all of that traveling, a whole nother set of schedule. There's a lot of things going on. But we ask that for the next few minutes and then this next hour together, that you take a moment to settle, to be still, and to rest in the presence of God. Oh God, we thank you for the blessing it is to gather together in this place to worship you. Help us through this beautiful holiday season to not get lost in the midst of all the details, but to find you, to find our rest in you. Help us to feel you in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Mark 10, verses 35 through 40. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. May God bless the reading of his word. So we begin our first prayer experience. One of the things that, uh, that I think is important about uh, this Sunday is the opportunity to hear a variety of ways to pray. When I was growing up, I always thought about praying in one simple way, and that was to close my eyes, put my hands together, bow my head. It's very effective in a good way. It blocks out a lot of things so we can focus on God. Uh, but sometimes if you've prayed, you know that words are hard to find. Sometimes things are happening in our lives and it's deep and it's difficult for us to express really what to say. And we may find ourselves over time saying the same basic things over and over again in, in our prayer life. Well, one of the things that uh, Christians have discovered is the Bible 
can be a great source of help for us to learn to pray and to pray things that maybe that are revealed to us by the light of Scripture. So this kind of uh, thing has been called Lectio Divina. It's a Latin phrase for divine reading. And it's a different kind of reading that if you were reading Scripture to uh, get information from it or if you were preparing for a class or to preach or, you know, do a devotion or something for some group. It's different from that. It's a time where you read it slowly. There's no agenda for you to read to in verses that day or whatever. As you read it this way, you want to read it slowly and thoughtfully. You may allow your mind and your heart to settle over words or phrases that just keep coming up to you for whatever reason. So there's no time frame of you getting through. And today, we're going to take the passage that Joanne read for us just a little while ago from Mark's Gospel, and we're going to try to linger over a question that was asked from uh, the mouths of these uh, disciples of Jesus and a question that Jesus asked to the disciples that he may ask us today. So I'll lead us through this time. So if you will, prepare for however you'd like to pray. You may want to close your eyes. You may want to take a few deep breaths. Just get yourself comfortable. And I'll lead us through this guided time of prayer. We're going to use our imaginations, which God has given all of us, to enter into this story. So I want you to imagine this story of these disciples with Jesus and try to enter into that scene. What do you see in the story? Where are they located? Are there hills nearby? Is it near the Sea of Galilee? Is it another place? Is there water? Is it dusty? Is it hot? Or is there green grass? What do you see in that story? Enter into that scene, if you will. What time of day? What do you hear? What do you see? You're in the company with the disciples of Jesus. Two of them are brothers called the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, James and John. And in the story, as you're there, uh, see them approach Jesus. And as they go to Jesus, they ask him a question. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Pay attention to your response to that. How do you feel hearing James and John ask that question to Jesus? If you had a chance, what would you say to James and John about their request? And notice the reactions of others in the group. What were the other disciples saying or thinking. Now listen to how Jesus responds to their question. Jesus says, what is it you want me to do for you today? Now as you hear that, let this sort of fade, this part with James and John, and imagine Jesus addressing that question to you this morning. What is it do you want me to do for you today? And let's linger there for a moment. What is your honest reply to our Lord this morning? What is it you want Jesus to do for you today? Spend a few moments expressing your heart. And after you've said what you need to say to Christ, listen. What does Jesus say to you about what you've just asked? What is his response? What do you feel? What do you sense? And what would James and John say to you? What would the others say to you?
Now, as we gather back to the present here in this sanctuary, please remember that the Lord doth always hear our prayers. Amen. Our pre-K and our kindergartners are invited to exit for children's worship as we sing together our hymn of prayer, hymn number 182, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Please stand as we sing together. <laughs> Please be seated. Now for our next experience, we're going to be praying for the world. And uh, I know all of us are aware of the many needs of our world. But as a way to think about praying for the world, that's such, such a huge and amazing task for us. I want us to think about uh, sort of circles, if you will. We'll think about a smaller circle and we'll begin to widen the circle. We'll begin what's closest to us, where we live in our home, and we'll widen it into the uttermost parts of the world. And as we do this, I want you just to think about the things in each of those circles of areas of concern that are on your heart, that just come to your mind in this time. And in our bulletins on the right side and inside, there's a little blank space at the bottom. If you like to use a pen, you can draw those circles and put in their names or little initials for whatever you want to pray for. Or you might want to just use it as a prayer list. Sometimes people like to, to do that under these headings. Or you can do it in your mind, whatever way is best for you. But we'll be praying now for the needs of our world. And as we do, let's begin getting ourselves again ready for a moment of prayer. And for me, I always like to take a few deep breaths and just get myself comfortable. So you may want to do that as we begin. And as you do, ask the Holy Spirit to pray in you and through you during this moment of prayer. So our first circle is our home, where we live, where you live. What are the concerns in your home with those who are closest to you? Maybe it's you who've brought burdens or concerns. You have questions, needing direction. Maybe it's someone you live with. What are the things you need to lift to the Lord today in prayer related to your home and your family?
And where are you experiencing grace? It is sometimes so easy to be caught up in the turmoil and the discord and the confusion that exists in our lives. What's good in your home? What is wholesome and life-giving to you? Where are you experiencing God's love and grace? And offer a word of thanks for the blessings of your family and your home. Now ask God to allow God's will and God's desires to happen and occur and be done in your home and in your life. Thy will be done. Now let's widen to a larger circle. This circle will include our community, our church, your place of work, your school, where you spend a lot of your time. Think for a moment about who comes to mind or what situation arises when you think about this wider circle. Who do you see? What is happening? The people you encounter on a daily basis. What are the issues and concerns? And what are the celebrations? Where do you see God active in your community and in this circle of your work and your family and friends and church? Lift the needs to God as well as your words of thanks for the blessings of these people in these situations in this circle of your community. Pray for what comes to mind. Now let's widen for a third circle. This would include our state, our country, our nation, the United States. There's so many things, but where are you drawn this morning in this time of prayer? What are your concerns, major issues for our nation, for our state? What do you think God wants for our nation now? You may pray for unity for peace, for understanding, for healing, for direction. Where is God working in our nation? Where is God being glorified? Where are the reasons for thankfulness, grace and goodness in our nation? Perhaps God is leading you to be a part of the healing and the peace that needs to occur. Pray for what you are led to pray related to our nation and our state. And now for our fourth circle that includes the uttermost parts of the world. There are many issues here, but where are you drawn? What are the concerns and issues that are important to you? Are things that just are occurring to you now because God is laying it on your heart? Issues related to the ecology and the environment, issues related to political strife that occurs in the world, refugees, poverty of our world, places where good things are happening and you want to bless that and say a word of thankfulness for it. Where are the needs? 
Where are you drawn? Place these in God's hands this morning, in His house. The concerns, the problems, and the joys of our world. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Amen. With one of the most open immigration policies in Africa, Uganda is one of the few places where refugees are allowed to come, live, and work. Therefore, Uganda has become a safe haven for more than 400,000 refugees who have been forced to flee their homelands due to continued war and conflict in their home countries in East Africa. Over 200,000 of these refugees are living in Kampala, Uganda. Jade and Shella Acker and Missy Ward Angala serve as CBF field personnel in Kampala, Uganda, ministering through Refuge and Hope International. Refuge and Hope seeks to help Kampala's refugees build their lives, realize self-sufficiency, and become leaders in their communities by providing educational, professional, personal, and spiritual development opportunities. Currently, there are more than 500 students enrolled at the Center of Hope, a refugee community center, which provides English, computer, and Bible classes. Refugees also have opportunities to gain needed skills through the vocational and business training programs. The Women's Ministry Program supports individuals and families in crisis and allows vulnerable women and girls the opportunity to heal and be empowered through the Women's Rehabilitation and Empowerment Program. Please pray for countries throughout East Africa that are still experiencing war and conflict. Pray for refugee students at the Center of Hope as they learn about God and the Bible and gain the skills and community support they need in order to live, heal, and support themselves and their families. Pray with me silently. Amen. Thank you, Jeffrey. Great voice, by the way. I really like that. Uh, uh, by the way, the uh, missionaries he mentioned were at our church last week at our deacon banquet from Uganda, so it was neat to have that connection. Uh, this next prayer experience will be led by our choir in its Lectio Divina, but instead of someone reading the words or we're reading the words ourselves, we're going to be able to hear the words sung and the melody. So listen to where you're drawn in this prayer experience that our choir will lead us in now.
I thought that was a wonderful prayer experience, choir. Thank you so much. And I was thinking about the wellspring of life and the very basic nature of that sung prayer for us as we thought about it. Uh, my hope comes from God. My ultimate hope comes from God. That is a basic prayer for all of us, isn't it? Well, in the bulletin, you notice in this section that it says sermon. And I want to tell you the difference between a sermon and what I'm going to do. Uh, a sermon and a homily. And a homily is what I'm going to do. A homily comes from a Greek word, homiletics, comes from the word that means preaching, essentially proclamation. And so when you see those words, the basic definition that you need to know is sermon is longer and homily short. So I'm doing a homily today. Y'all okay with that? Oh, there's a lot of amens. Most I've gotten since I've been here. Thank you, Glenn. <clears throat> I do want to talk just a little bit about prayer in my homily and just some tips and some reminders for us. I had a professor in seminary, Glenn Henson, who uh, taught Baptist spirituality and prayer for many years at Southern and at other places. And I considered one of the great uh, leaders in Baptist life related to an understanding of expanding the way we think about encountering God through prayer. Uh, when I grew up, I'd never heard of contemplative prayer. That, like I told you earlier, the way I heard about praying was you close your eyes, you put your hands together, and, and you bowed your head. Or, and some deacon or somebody led it or, you know, whatever. What I found was sometimes I could get into the same routine of just saying words over and over again. So it was really neat to encounter uh, Dr. Henson in his class when I was in seminary. But one of the things he would do is he would take students on field trips to experience prayer from other places. And one of the places he would go was Gethsemane Abbey in Kentucky. It's a monastery of Cistercian monks. And one of the things Cistercian monks do is try to have an economy of words. So they're not going to necessarily talk. I, I told the early service, for years Mary and I have ordered chocolate and cheese that these monks make and we give it uh, or eat it for Christmas. And uh, uh, used to, you had to just you know fill out the form and send it in. You couldn't actually call them because there was an economy of words. They're not going to be doing that. Now you can use the website and I think they have somebody that answers the phone periodically. But one of the famous people who was there was a guy named Thomas Merton. Some of you who've read anything about prayer or whatever may have come across Thomas Merton in his name. So one of the giants of thinking about a ways to encounter God through prayer. Thomas Merton was so popular that people flocked to this little place in Kentucky, to Gethsemane Abbey, to meet with him and to get counsel and advice about how to pray and to know God better and seek God's direction. So much so that these Cistercian monks were a little bit bothered by it, so they built him a cottage on the edge of the property so people could go visit him and leave them a little peace to do their work and their sense of calling God. Well, Dr. Henson one day took a group of students from the seminary in Richmond, Virginia, where he was teaching, and uh, the, the guide for the day happened to be Thomas Merton, but he went by Brother Lawrence at the monastery. And so some of them, they had no idea really who he was, just Brother Lawrence. And he was guiding them around and apparently was so impressive that toward the end of the tour, one of the students said, you know, why is a, a smart guy like you all holed up in a place like this in Kentucky? And his response was, because I believe in the power of prayer. Could have done a lot of things with his life and chose to live in a little cottage on the edge of this uh, country place in the middle of Kentucky at a monastery to spend his life praying because I believe in the power of prayer. And I, I wanted just to say a couple things about that. I think all of us probably do believe in the power of prayer. We hope in the power of prayer. But what I think happens for many, many of us is we're not for whatever reason, personality or time, or it could be thousands of reasons, we find that the pattern of our prayer life is nothing like the sweet hour of prayer that we just sang about earlier, right? We, we might not get that whole hour of prayer. Few of us can experience these long times of prayer, and maybe we feel like our prayer life is fairly shallow and, and not as deep as it should be. So let me just remind us of, of one thing that's important for us to know, and that is it's a privilege that God has granted to us to be able to pray anytime we want, anywhere we want, any way we want. 
God has given this as part of God's grace to you and me as a privilege. I remember several years ago that Mary and I got to meet uh, President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind Carter. It was at a hotel, it was a Baptist convention, and President Carter has always been deeply involved in Baptist life. And so he said, I want to, uh, to meet with young Baptist preachers, young Baptist ministers. And so we were in that group. And we came into this big, you know, sort of conference room, and there's the president and, and Mrs. Carter, and uh, there's Secret Service, you know, and we're sort of, that's pretty cool. And uh, so he spoke to us for a while, but not only from a distance, but he invited each of us to come and talk to us personally. And I've never forgotten that. Maybe you've had an experience where you've met someone who's very famous or very accomplished in the world, someone well-known, a hero of yours or something, a sports figure it could be, and you never forget that, right? It's amazing the opportunity to get to do that. I was watching one of the late shows this week, Jimmy Kimmel, and on Jimmy Kimmel, Rachel Weiss, Rachel Weiss was on there, she's an actress, and she's married to Daniel Craig, who plays James Bond. And been Bond in the last few movies. Inspector, the new Bond movie, just came out recently. So she said at the premiere in England that the royal family showed up to the premiere of, of the James Bond movie. And so her husband, playing the lead role with the other actors, are in this receiving line. And the royal families are coming through. Prince William and Princess Kate Middleton and so forth. And they're coming through. And Rachel Weisz is the, is the wife. She's an actress, but she's the wife of Daniel Craig. And she said, you know, it's a long line. She said, I had to go to the restroom, the loo she called it. And so she went to the loo and then she's washing her hands and as she's washing her hands somebody says the prince is coming, the prince is coming, the prince is coming. And so there was no time to dry her hands. She just went back and got in the line and here comes Prince William and her hands are just soaking wet. So she says I I'm sorry I've been to the loo. I've washed my hands. I just didn't have time to dry them. And she said he took her hand and said well at least they're clean. <laughs> So I thought that was a neat story. I don't think she'll ever forget that story of being able to do that. Listen, God has given us the privilege of any time we want, anywhere we want, for how long we want, however we want. God has granted us the privilege to encounter and be in the presence and in conversation with the Creator of the universe, with God Almighty, our Savior, anytime, anywhere we want. It is a wonderful privilege for us to be able to go to prayer. But again, I think a lot of us, though we know that privilege exists, we're probably thinking, I can't carve out, or I just haven't been able to have these long, deep times of prayer, so my prayer life's not important. It's not a very big deal, because I just can't do that. Well, I want to introduce you to one other person, and this is Francis of Assisi, Saint Francis. He wrote one of the wonderful prayers that you've ever have heard before. And some of you might have heard it sung or read or you've read it yourself. It begins, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. It's a beautiful prayer. If you can look it up and find it, it's a wonderful one to have. I have a copy of it in one of my Bibles. Well, I want you to know about Francis. Francis was a guy that decided he wanted to live like Jesus. So he decided he wanted to be a wandering preacher with very few uh, material possessions. And he felt God had a call in his life to build this little country church. It was a dwindling old church building out in the country where he lived. So he went out there day by day to begin to put the rocks back and build the church back up. His calling was really deeper than that, and he understood it later. It was not just to build this church building. His calling was to help renew the church the universal church. And a lot of people were attracted to this. So people began to come out there and help him with that church and try to live the simple life that he was living. And those people became known as the Franciscans to this day. But I think they were also drawn by the way he prayed. And I want you to know this. This St. Francis, of the founder of the Franciscans, wrote that great prayer. He never prayed long prayers. He never had this sweet hour of prayer, at least that we know of. He didn't sit down for long periods of time and do all this stuff. Instead, his prayers happen many, many times throughout the day. And honestly, that's been more the pattern of my life. It may be of yours too. He had a lot of spontaneous prayers that were in the moment of when he was living and the activity of what he was doing. And I'll say to you as pastor that a lot of people say, you know, I'd love for you to pray for me. And there's a lot of needs. Noah had a wonderful prayer for us for our invocation today. And I was thinking as he was praying it about uh, people who are sick and have different needs in our families and our church now. 
Um, uh, there's a lot of things going on and I pray about those and I pray about those a lot and I do have times where I go into my uh, my pastor's office there or at home a little prayer area and pray and let's pray for a long periods of time but one thing as I found that makes it effective at least for me is is that when you come to my mind I can pray for you right then wherever I am throughout the day. And it allows me to feel like that's what I'm hoping to do, part of my prayer ministry, my role as a pastor and ours as a church members, is I can pray for you all the time in many different points. I don't have to sit around that side and, you know, that time in the morning early or late at night to do it whenever you come to my mind. So it's amazing because you do come to my mind a lot for different situations that I can pray for for you and, and mention you to the Lord in that moment. I just throw that out to you to say, Francis found this is to be a very effective way of praying. Spontaneous prayer. It's just quick dialogue. When something came to his heart, it was a quick way. It was an opportunity for him to lift that to the Lord. I liken it to this. Before the days of texting, that was sort of what might have been for, for Francis. He was texting God these brief little prayers along. And I think about that a lot because for me, uh, with my three of my boys off at college, if I get a text from them, it's a pretty cool thing. I'm glad to get that. Now, I would love to have long conversations with them. And sometimes we have these conversations on the phone, and I think, boy, that was a long time. And I look, and it was seven minutes. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. And that's a cool seven minutes that I've gotten, and I'll take it. Believe me. But also, every once in a while, you'll get that text from your kid that just says, I love you, or send money, or, you know, whatever it is. That's cool, too. That's a connecting point for me. And we can do that with God about anyone or any situation or any need in our lives at any moment, at any time. So, by all means, carve out a sweet hour of prayer. There's nothing wrong with that. But also, God has granted us this opportunity to do things like what Francis did. In the moment when you're doing something, when someone comes to your mind or a situation arises, you can pray right then. And I've just found that to be a real effective way. Uh, on, on Tuesdays and Wednesday mornings, our WPM, our weekday preschool ministry, has chapel here. And we always we sit over in this section. This is a popular section for me today, isn't it? So this section over here, they sit here on Tuesdays and, and Wednesdays. And I do the Tuesday chapel, and our staff takes turns on the Wednesday chapel. And I love that. I'm learning so much about the Bible and about God from these little preschool kids, I promise you. But the other day I came in on Wednesday, Taylor was leading them, and he didn't know I was going to come in there, so I sat in the back and just to observe how things were going, and he did a great job with it. And after it's over, when we pray, they always follow us and we lead them in prayer. So we put our hands together, they put their hands together. We bow our heads and close our eyes, they do the same. And then we'll say a line, and then they say a line after us. And then finally, Taylor's says amen and then all the kids amen and then when it's over one of the kids right at that moment said hey what does amen mean anyway <laughs> and I thought Taylor and the teachers handled it very very well I just tell you that story to say we don't have to understand all the mechanics of prayer understand all the things of what it means and how it works but I do wanted you to hear today that it's available to you it's a privilege that God has given us out of His love for His children, for you and me, anytime, anywhere. And there's no one correct way to pray. Uh, pray as you can, not as you can't. I always thought that was a good word. Today we've experienced this time. I think it's good that our church sets this aside. Sometimes we don't get this much. This is a house of prayer, and this is a good Sunday. I hope it has been for you. And I hope that you'll remember the call that God and the invitation that God gives to all of us to pray. Remember what Thomas Merton said? Why am I spending my life doing what I'm doing in this little cottage praying? Because I believe in the power of prayer. May it be so for all of us. Amen. Hello, I'm Mike Oliver. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity Baptist Church. I'd like to thank you for joining us for worship through our church website. And also, I'd like to invite you to come and visit us. This is a great church. We have friendly people here. We value worship. We value community and global missions. And there are programs for children all the way to senior adults. I think you'll like our church, and I hope you'll come and visit us and see for yourself in person. If you have questions about our church, like to know more, We'd love for you to contact us. There's information on our website. You can call us or email us or come by, and one of our staff members will be glad to talk with you. Welcome to Trinity, and God bless you and keep you.